I'm Carrie with Educating, keeping you on the cutting edge of education. You know, usually uh, we at Educating, we are here to give you some tips and strategies to use in the classroom. But today I really want to talk to administrators about ways to help you retain those quality teachers in your building come next year. I know it's early in the school year, but it's time to really start thinking about those things. I've heard a lot of uh, news reports and I've read a lot of articles about teachers who have just reached their limit and have started quitting, have started getting out of education and going into new careers. So today I want to share with you five tips on how to retain those wonderful teachers. So if you really like our videos, please make sure you like them, you share them, you subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit that bell so that you can get notifications when we post our videos. So let's get into it. Let's learn more about retention of those quality teachers. My first tip is to really just give those teachers that you hired, the ones that are there in your building now and doing a great job for you, give them a voice. Give them a chance to make these decisions in their classrooms. You hired the best, the brightest teacher that you could find. It's time for those administrators to just let these educated people do their jobs. We know they have the education. You went into their background. Teachers need a voice in how their classroom runs. They are the people that are in that classroom with those students on a daily basis, seeing those children's reactions to the lessons, understanding the kids' backgrounds, their prior knowledge, all of the things that we learned in school. But if the administrators are there micromanaging every, them every step of the way, they feel powerless. And so my absolute number one tip is to give those teachers a voice, a voice in their curriculum. If you're adopting a new uh, math series, reading series, just anything, make sure that the teachers have a voice in the selection process and that they can teach the content the way that they have learned to do their best and to reach the children in the best way that they can. Teachers will appreciate that they are uh, respected in their field. You know, there are so many people who, you know, we aren't getting paid a lot. We're disrespected by the students and lack of discipline and all of these things. Why would we want to be disrespected by our boss and be micromanaged that way? The majority of teachers that I know, uh, that's the way they feel when they're micromanaged, like they aren't trusted that they aren't respected in what they know and what they are paid to do. So give those teachers a voice, let them have control of their classroom uh, within the parameters that uh, follow policy. It really will make a huge difference. So number two, really pay attention to the professional development that you are giving your teachers. Professional development shouldn't be restricted to the first few days of school before the kids come. Most of that professional development is housekeeping stuff. Um, rosters, uh, new policies. Um, yes, we do need that training, but that's not the only training that your teachers need. They need ongoing professional development on where they need the most assistance. COVID struck and I had to send my teachers home in uh, April. Well, the time from April to the end of May, we did not waste a moment of that time. I got my teachers training on how to do online classrooms. The ongoing professional development will allow the teachers to really spread their wings to gain a better understanding, and that can't be anything but a positive in your building. Ongoing professional development could be things that you do uh, during faculty meeting time. Most faculty meetings, if you listen to teachers and their complaints, most of the stuff that is in a faculty meeting could be shared through an email, a memo, whatever. What a waste of time if you are not using 
your faculty meeting time as some kind of professional development, maybe a PLC that they are uh, leading, or even you are leading if your teachers really aren't there yet. But professional development that is ongoing and purposeful is my second tip. So number three, we have to get these teachers into some leadership roles. The best teachers that you have have awesome ideas. They have ideas that are specific to your school, specific to your students, and specific to your needs. But if they are not in a leadership role, those ideas will go unheard. These teachers need to be in roles where they can help you as an administrator make a difference in your building. Listen to what they have to say and be purposeful in going out to get that from them. Your lead teachers are teachers who are reaching out to the other teachers in the building. They are the ones that have their feelers out and they are listening to the complaints that don't make it up to the principal's office. And if you choose teachers who are true leaders, they will share with you those concerns. To have teachers that are in quality, purposeful leadership roles is a huge asset to making your building better for the curriculum, for the students, for behavior, for attendance. It is gonna make your building a better place to be in the overall climate and culture it will become a more positive place altogether. So teachers really need to have quality, purposeful leadership roles so that they feel that they are part of making improvements for your building and that they feel important. So get some leaders uh, talking into your ear instead of the complainers. All right, tip number four you need to bring in better technology. What I mean by that is um, there are some computers in the classroom right now that are older than the students. Technology has moved on. I understand that there are budget constraints and I also understand that CARES funds came and a lot of people bought technology for the students uh, to have like a Chromebook or a laptop or an iPad, that sort of thing but what was bought for the teachers to use in their room to connect with all of that technology? Do we have smart boards? Do we have that Elmo? Do we have whatever the document camera they need? Do they have webcams in their room to be able to make a video for the students that are working virtually or to just upload to their um, online platform so that they are uh, engaging in those lessons better? We have to move with the technology. The students are. The students are moving with their technology at home 100%. They've got the better phone than the teachers. They've got things at home that the teachers might have at home, but they definitely don't have at school. So my fourth tip is to keep up with the teacher technology, not just the student technology. And that might also involve some professional development. Not everyone is comfortable with the newest technology. We need to make sure that our teachers feel confident and that they feel like they will be able to use any new technology in a way that is purposeful and meaningful for the students. So keeping up to date on educational technology really is a great, great thing and it's my number four. And so my final tip for you today is give recognition where recognition is due. Teachers want to know that they are doing the right thing, that they've made a good choice, that they made good decisions. Compliment them on the things that they are doing great. When you compliment people on the things that are going well, it is so much easier to give that constructive criticism when things aren't going so great recognize their efforts. A simple little happy in their mailbox sometimes really goes a long way. When you go in for that walkthrough observation, make sure you give a compliment on the things that were going right. We cannot focus on the negatives. The negatives must have attention. 
but it can't be the 100% focus every time you are talking about a teacher's lessons, lesson plans, the way she's interacting with a student. We have to find the ways to complement all of their efforts, ways that they are doing things right so that they can share those things with other teachers. One of the best things that I did in my building was I had my teachers observe other teachers who had a strength where they themselves had a weakness. This was such a wonderful thing for my teachers, both of them, because the people who were being observed because of their uh, great strength felt pride in what they were doing and were happy to help their fellow teacher. And then the people who were observing because they had a weakness, they got to see the things that I had been talking to them about in action. What a great way to learn. And it's through a colleague, someone who is a trusted member of the inner circle that teachers um, you know, become and, and enjoy having as coworkers. So make sure that you are acknowledging the positives and addressing the negatives and not being one-sided with your comments. That's number five. Here at Educating, we want to make sure we are reaching you and addressing your needs also. We've got lots of videos on our website related to administrators and teachers. We've got products, we've got services, we've got online courses. We are here to make sure we are keeping you on the cutting edge of education in every way possible. Uh, I recently wrote an article about new administrators and making sure that they're not falling heaven in these pitfalls of what new administrators fall into all the time. Check out our website. I'll put those links in our description. We here at Educating are here to keep you on the cutting edge of education. Make sure you like our videos. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that bell so you get notifications. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great school year.